Okay, and welcome to another uh, lesson on history. And this time what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at the topic of crime and punishment. So it's a quick introduction to the whole topic this lesson. So hopefully I'm not going to uh, drone on for too long. But then again, you know, I never drone. It's an exhilarating all of my lessons. Okay, so first off, as always, make sure you've got a pen and paper. A couple of pens probably because you um, need one to mark with and as always start with a quiz okay so this is a quiz that is hoping to have a little bit of a recall of what we've done at key stage three so we can understand um, a little bit of what we're going to be doing today because we're going to be looking today in the next lesson at medieval England right so Pause it, give yourself four minutes to answer those questions. Get cracking. Okay, so welcome back. And I've gone through some of the answers here. So what were medieval towns like? Small, unhygienic, and also added in the town. Markets there, because they were also where people lived and worked. So I've added that in because you'd have um, Farm animals coming in from different places to be sold, to be bought. How religious was medieval? Extre England, extremely religious, but they were Catholic. They weren't Protestant because that doesn't come in until the early modern period. What was the feudal system? It's a system of dividing power and land. We're going to look at that a little bit more next lesson. And then what did the medieval peasant do for, for the Lord? Well, they worked on their land for three times a week. Okay, and it's not just a little bit of work. The Lord basically controls the peasant. If the peasant is divorced, or not divorced, sorry, if their husband dies, the Lord would make them remarry. So the Lord was a bit of a control freak and would make people do what he wanted. Peasants weren't free, unfree. Not slaves, but they're not free. Okay. Uh, who was the most powerful person in medieval England? Well, that was the king or the monarch as you do get queens later on. Okay, so what we're going to be doing today, let me just rip that out. All right, so what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be looking at an introduction to what we're going to look at. So for instance, one thing that is really, really important is the timeline we're going to be looking at. So we're actually going to be starting at year 500 because, well, nice round number. Look at my amazing ruler. Dun, dun, dun. And we go all the way up to today. So we look at how criminals are treated today. And in there we've got um, different time, we've got different time periods which we need to know. So for instance, we have 500 to 1450. We have this is called the medieval period. Medi means middle, so it's kind of like the middle between today and sort of the Romans, although it's not really in the middle, it's just what I call it. And then 1450 to 1750, we're looking at something called the early modern. Not quite modern, not quite early, the early modern period. And then we have up until 1900s, we have the industrial era, industrial. That word looks like industry, because it's all about industry. Clap that out. And then today we have the modern, the modern. Okay, so these are the periods we're looking at. We're gonna look at each one in detail because we need to know what happens in each one so we can understand what has happened throughout British history. And then we can also start comparing and contrasting, say, what's this one like? Well, how, it's, how is it different? How is it different? So we can actually start to understand how we've got to the society we have got today. Okay, now what I'd like you to do is I would like you to actually start your revision. So I would like you to actually create four flashcards on those four. 
So if you've got card, absolutely great. If not, you've got some paper, so don't worry. So what I would do if I would do is I'd get some paper. Okay. Hold it. Okay. Cut it up. And then you've got your time. Then you've got a flashcard. So what I'd like you to write on there is I would like you to write medieval. Now not in the middle, just at the top, because what you're going to do, hopefully, is you're going to add a little bit of information to this as we go on. Okay, so what you can start off with though is adding the dates. I've made a mistake there, 500 to 1450. Okay, I want to add a little bit of information to that as we go on. So we're already starting our revision because we're absolutely amazing Stuart, the students. So if you start doing that and in two minutes, come back. So if you need to pause it, pause it. And off we go. So we've done that, smashed it, boom. Already started the revision. Let's get going. All right, so what we're also going to look at is not just time periods, we're going to look at different themes. So what are these themes I hear you ask? Ooh, strap in. So one of the themes are causes of crime. So cause is why something happens. Paris gets to that. Okay. So the cause of Mr. Halpin waking up is his alarm clock goes off. His alarm clock doesn't go off, he doesn't wake up. Okay, so the cause of crime, so one day you may not have any money, so you may steal. Okay, this leads to that, this causes that. Uh, someone shouts out in Mr. Halpin's class, this leads to, this causes Mr. Halpin to go absolutely crazy and give them a reminder. So that's one, boom. Then another one is a nature of crime. A nature is what is the crime. You may have heard it in science of, of the nature of something. What actually is it like? Okay, so for instance, nature of crime could be theft. So this person steals money from this person, this person stabs this person. The nature of the crime is the theft and the murder. I don't know why I instantly picked those two out. Maybe I'm a, a murderous thief, deep at heart. Well, we'll soon find out. All right, so we've done two. Now we're going to have a third because it's history. Can't be as easy as just two. So the next one is responsibility for policing. Now what this means is it means who is actually doing the policing. So here's our thief doing a runner, running off. And here's the person catching them. So this person is doing the policing, catching the criminal. Responsible, whose job is it? Is it? Now this could also mean how they do it. Now the next one is a really, really fascinating one. This one is punishment, but it's methods, so it's how they do it. So in science, when you do an experiment, you get the method, that's how you do it, it's like the recipe, it's how you do it, so the methods of punishment are how you do it. And we're gonna see loads, so one is hanging people, one is chopping someone's arm off, 
going to be an axe by the way. Uh, one is executing someone. So they chop their head off. And another that might be fining. So taking someone's money away from them. So join with a sad face, he's not so happy about that. And the final one is attitudes. Now, attitude is how someone feels. So you may often hear someone say, oh, don't give me that attitude. I know I tell my year 11s that quite a lot because they're showing how they feel about something. Attitude, it's often used as a negative. So your attitude to school is that you absolutely love school. My attitude to KFC is I absolutely love KFC. So attitudes of punishment, or to punishment, I should say, is why are we doing it? So are we trying to um, stop people committing the crimes? So are we going to try and turn them from thinking into criminals into not thinking about it? So are we trying to stop the crime? Are we trying to just punish people? What is it that we're actually trying to do? Okay, we're gonna look at that, this one in just a second. But first thing I want you to do is let's create flashcards. Dun, 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 dun. One, two, three, four, five, five flashcards. And again, remember, as you do it, so this might be a flashcard after I've cut it. After you do it, so it might be causes of crime. We've only just started learning it, so what I want you to do is give a little bit of information about what it means. You draw a picture like I have, because pictures are great, but you've got all this space for you to add in later about the causes of crime, okay? So off you go. I'd probably pause it and I'd probably give yourself about one, two, three, four, five, a minute for each, five minutes, five and a half. Try and push it, go for four. Be crazy. And then come back. Okay, so welcome back. Remember, you've got that magic pause button, you've got a rewind button if you need to go back. I know, it's insane. So, what we're now going to do is we're going to have a look at these attitudes to punishments. The reason why we're starting them now and we're going to teach them all now is because they keep popping up throughout the time period. Okay, so it's not just we learn one, then when we go to the next time period, we learn another. Often we're seeing these constantly throughout. Okay, so first one we're going to look at is. something called retribution. Now you may have heard of someone saying something like punishment fits the crime or an eye for an eye. So I want to draw this person without an eye. So he said his eye taken out. Well he's going, oh someone's done that to me. I want to do the exact same to them. So he goes over and he takes that person's eye. So if this person has their leg chopped off as punishment they would want the other person's leg chopped off. If you steal from me, I'll steal from you. We call this retribution. Okay, it's kind of like if you steal something, you should have all your money taken off you. An eye for an eye, or the punishment fits the crime. Another one is we try to stop people becoming criminals. So this is a criminal. He's there about to steal. He's there thinking here. Yeah, I could do with some money. I want some money. I want some money. But we want him to think about what's going to happen. If he steals, he might be put in prison. So then he's not going to steal. We call this deterrence. 
it's in and with it's sort of being scared it's like if you see a policeman if you see a policeman you're not going to then commit the crime are you because you know that something's going to happen right, the next one is what we used to do not so much now but we used to punish people in public so this person's just been hanged and you've got the public often means people so public house is where people go so these people are watching this person do it so we call this a public punishment now just so i don't fill you with too much information what i would like you to do now is i would like you to explain how these work so how is retribution meant to work how is deterrence meant to work how is public punishment meant to work one two three a minute and a half that's four and a half minutes pause it give yourself a chance to tell me how each of these work and then come back and we will get cracking all right so welcome back how do they work well this is a tough punishment scares people deterrence it tries to stop crime either through fear or just knowledge public punishment this works in number ways it can be humiliating not just like Often punishments aren't just, you're not just always dying, you might have your arm chopped off. Well, it's humiliating because now everyone saw you screaming in pain. Everyone can see you without an arm. So for instance, if I'm going around without an arm because I've chopped it off, everyone now can see, oh, that person committed a crime, that person's a thief. No one's gonna trust me again. So it's humiliating. But also everyone else here, they're looking at that going, don't want that, don't want that. And it scares everyone else. Well, what's another what's another word if you're scaring out someone to stop a crime? Dun, 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 dun. Ah, deterrence. Boom. Scares everyone. Acting as a deterrent. Okay, now the next couple. What we've got looked at and we see this one a lot in school this one is this is my amazing drawing of britain or england and wales at least the person would just get kicked out you commit a crime on your bike out you go we call this banishment it's like in school and someone's shouting out reminder warning out you go see you later you've just been banished you're kicked out. So if you commit a crime, you're out of the bill, you're out of the country. This is, becomes really, really important when we look at Australia and the industrial age. Okay, let's make a bit more room for my amazing drawings. The next one is you may have someone thinking about committing a crime. They're thinking about stealing this money. They want that money. Now, what we try and do is we try and educate them so teach them it may be through actually teaching sort of school it may also be through punishment so they're like you do this we'll punish you we're teaching you not to do it so what we're trying to do is we're trying to get to a point where we get people to no longer think about stealing we're trying to get them to think about what they've done wrong and what they need to change so they don't do it again we call this rehabilitation you may have heard of rehab so rehab is short for rehabilitation say if someone's got a drinking problem or a drug problem 
they go to rehabilitation to teach them how to not have that problem anymore. Okay, and the next one, this one is basically it's about giving back. So let's say this person stole money. They stole money from someone, naughty, bad. So what they've then got to do is they've either got to give the money back or they've got to work for that money. So I'm going to draw a picture of a tool here. That's a hammer. So they've either got to give the money back or work for it. We call this restitution. So think of it like if you stole um, money from me, I'd either want that money or money back, or I'd make you do something for it. I mean, teach a couple of lessons for it. So we call that restitution. Okay, next thing we need to do, just like we did before, how do these work? Three, two, one, four and a half minutes, off you go. Welcome back. Okay, so banishment, literally, Get rid of criminals. They're literally getting rid of them. They can't commit a crime if they're in the country. Tries to teach people. So it tries to stop future crime. Restitution. It's fixing the problem caused so say if you hurt someone it's fixing that problem isn't it okay that's how it's trying to uh, go over the problem so make sure you mark your answers in green add a little bit if you can and now what I would like you to do is give these a score out of five for effectiveness how effective do you think they are at stopping crime? So if you think it's amazing at stopping crime, five out of five. Okay, and give a little bit of an explanation as to why. One, two, three, four, five, six, six, 30 seconds each, three minutes. Pause it to give yourself a chance, off you go. Okay, well. That, those answers are completely up to you. Um, for instance, you may have said banishment, five out of five, it gets rid of the criminal. Yes, amazing, but if you did that for everyone, if you did that for someone stealing bread, you're soon out of a country, you're soon out of people left, and where are you going to send them to? So it's quite tricky. Now what I'd like to do is, which do you think we should use today. Okay, if you're only going to pick one, you can't have three of them, which one are you going to pick? Okay, I'd like you to explain your answer. Give at least three reasons. Remember when you're thinking, which I think we should use. Okay, list, so keywords, list it, say why it works, three reasons why, off you, well, three reasons, need five minutes, off you. Okay, welcome back. Welcome to send me your answers for those. Happy to read them at my school email, which you should all know by now. So I'm not going to put it on here because this is YouTube and not a nutter. Um, so six flashcards now for retribution, deterrence, public punishment, banishment, rehabilitation, restitution. Now, again, leave space. So if this is it, have it at the top. Leave a little bit of space because you're going to be adding to this throughout with examples of ones that have been used. Okay, 
Right, so now we've already got, what, 10? Maybe more flashcards? Great. We're going to keep adding to those, so keep making sure you use them because you don't want to forget any information, otherwise there's no point in learning in the first place. All right, as always, it has been a pleasure. Off you go. See ya.